But the final answer is going to come from torque is equal to I F equals MA uh, alpha. Okay. So we need to know I and we need to know alpha from the data they gave us. This was a solid disk. And from that, if you don't know, you look up on page 260 and you see that uh, I for a solid disk is one half MR squared. Okay, you have to know, have to have some way to know that. Um, okay, so we know M and we know R, so we can get I, right? Um, I think I calculated, oh, by the way, the, you do need SI units, though, so that would be 0 0.017 kilograms, and that would be 0 0.06 meters. So make sure you're using SI units. But then when you plug those numbers into 1 half MR squared, you will get um, 3 point, I think I have this right, 3.06 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, that's I. Three, can't read that. 3.06 times 10 to the negative fifth kilogram meter squared. Okay, so we've got I. Now we need alpha. What do you think we're going to do to get alpha? Big four. Big four. Pick a big four that has these two omegas and time, and we're looking for alpha. So that would be V equals VO plus AT. And there's the angular version of that big four equation. So now, without me writing it, just look up here and plug in the numbers, and you get alpha. Solve it for alpha. And alpha comes out to be, um, I have 26.25 for alpha. And that's radians, radians per second squared. Now you've got the two numbers here and here that you need to plug in there to get the torque. Just multiply I times alpha. Okay? Everybody see what we did there? You do have to remember the big four still, in, in angular version of the big four. Uh, that you learned back in chapter eight, but we're still using those. And here's our new second law of motion equation. So, uh, it corresponds to F equals MA. That's torque equals I alpha. And you had to know it, that when it says it's a solid disk, then that's what, that's I. Right, and of course, you could have looked that up. Okay, that's that. Ready to move on? Yes. All right, number, what's the next one we need to do? 35. 35. Wait, are we doing all of them? Yes, second. 35, all right, go ahead. 35. Two wheels have the same mass and radius of 4 kilograms and 0.35 meters, respectively. One okay. has the shape of a hoop and the other the shape of a solid disc. The wheels start from rest and have a constant angular acceleration with respect to a rotational axis that is perpendicular to the plane of the wheel at its center. Each turn through an each turns through an angle of thirteen radians and eight seconds. Thirteen radians and eight seconds? Mm -hmm. Okay. Find the net external torque that acts on each wheel. Find, I'm sorry, find what? The net external for, or torque. Okay, oh, on, torque on each wheel. On, there are two different wheels. Yes. Okay. Uh, one's solid and one's a hoop. Okay. So remember for the hoop, the I is going to be MR squared. For the solid one, I is going to be one half MR squared. Okay, so that's the difference in whether it's solid or it's just all the masses on the outside. Okay, so we're trying to find torque, and torque is I alpha again. So that's what we have to find for each one. Um, we need to find this for the one that's a hoop, and then you have to do the same thing, this for the one that's solid. And I think the uh, alpha is gonna be the same for both of them. We get the alpha from the big four, and probably we can use, let's see, we have, we have time, and we have theta, 
you can think of this as two things. Here's, here's the delta theta and here's the time. And we have started at rest. Uh, the initial velocity was zero and we need to know alpha. So I think we could use delta theta equals VOT plus one half a t squared where that goes away because omega o is zero and you know this is 13 radians and alpha is what we want to know and the time was eight seconds so use that version that big four equation and solve for alpha i think i did that and got alpha to be 0.406 radians per second squared. Now that's going to be the same for both because all these numbers that we use apply to both disks. So they both have the same alpha, which is 0.406. Um, but they're going to have different R's. Um, I'm sorry, different I's. They don't have different R's. They have different moment of inertia. Uh, so for one of them, for the hoop, it's MR squared times alpha. And for the solid, it's one half mr squared times alpha. Okay, so that's what you do. And if you and you got the m and the r, m r squared over here, it's m r squared times a half. And so obviously, the solid disk will have about half as much torque. I have the final answer then to be 0 0.20 for the hoop, torque, 0 0.20 newton meters. And, and this one is half as much, but on mine it came out, they rounded off to be 0 0.099, which is very close to half um, newton meters. Okay, that's just what I got when I solved them. But you know this one should be half as much because everything's the same except for that fraction, one half right there. All right, everybody okay with that? In both of those, you're using the big four to get alpha, and then you're, you're going back to this equation. Torque is I alpha, F equals MA. All right, is there another one we need to work? Or is that it? 49. 49, shouted the audience. 49. All right, 349. All right, go ahead. A flywheel is a solid disc that rotates by an axis that is perpendicular to the disc at its center. Rotating flywheels provide blah, 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 blah. The gasoline burned in a 300 mile trip in a typical mid sized car produces about 1.2 times 10 to the ninth joules of energy. How fast would a 13 kilogram flywheel with a radius of 0.3 meters have to rotate to store this much energy? Give your answer in revolutions per minute. Okay, that's the amount of energy, and they want to know how uh, fast how fast they want omega, is that right? But they want it in revolutions per minute, is that what it said? Okay. But when we do the math, we're gonna get radians per second. So we'll just have to convert it. All right, so uh, that's the amount of energy. And what you now know is that um, because energy is one half mv squared for linear things, these angular version of that is one half i omega squared and, and i because it's a solid disk i is one half mr squared that's i so so this is kind of what we're dealing with one half i omega squared and and that's they that's the kinetic energy that's going to be equal to this energy they gave you. So you have a number for E, you have a number for M and for R, and you solve it for omega. So 
Now that will that that will come out in radians per second, but that will be the right answer if you plug in those numbers to this and solve it for omega. Uh, when I did that, I got omega equal to six point four zero five. Didn't round it off very much. Times ten to the fourth, and that's radians per second. So that's just plugging in the numbers they gave us into this. The physics is you had to know this is the equation, and then secondly, you had to know because it's a solid disk to use one half mr squared for i. But if you do that, you'll get this correct answer. However, we still need to convert that to, um, to revolutions per minute. So when you're converting, I still I still fall back on the thing I taught you back in chemistry a hundred years ago, where um, if it's radians per second here, what I can do is say, this marker is starting to lose its juice. I see that all the time. I'll finish. Whatever units up there, radians, and I'd like to change that to revolutions, and I know one revolution is two pi radians, so I divide by two pi. And then instead of seconds, I want minutes, so seconds are down low. If I want to cancel them, I put them up high, and I know 60 seconds are one minute. Okay, so that will give me revolutions per minute. So you have to divide by 2 pi to get radians, and you multiply by 60 to get seconds. That answer comes out 6.1 times 10 to the fifth. through yeah 6.1 times 10 to the fifth revolutions per minute okay that's number 49 Any questions about that all right I'm gonna see if this black one works better if not they're headed for the trash you just gotta turn it or you can turn it in a different side do what <laughs> like use a different side of the of the marker. Yeah. <laughs> the marker has sides. Yeah, it's like you look at front, left and right, and out. Okay, there's one side. Here's another side. Ooh, that one's bad. <laughs> yeah. Here's a side. Ooh, that one's bad too. That one's not too bad. Oh, you're right. They have different sides. <laughs> All right. Nobody ever told me that before. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Lou. All right. We're on. Do we have to do another one or are we done? 51. 51. 51. Okay. Here we go. 51. That's not too bad. Go ahead. This is a long one. It is? Yeah, yeah. I guess it'll be. Yeah. What time does this period end? No. 20. 20? Yeah, we got right. time. Sure we'll do it fast. Go. There's like four. Okay. You have to write one. Each, the three objects lie in the XY plane. Each rotates about the Z axis with an angular speed of six radians per second. The mass m of each object and its perpendicular distance r from the z-axis are as follows. 1. The mass of 1 is 6 kilograms and its radius is 2, mil 2 meters. 2. Mass is 4 kilograms and radius is 1.5 meters. 3. Mass is 3 kilograms and radius is 3 mil er, meters. And A. Find the tangential speed of each object, B, determine the total kinetic energy of the system using the expression K. Okay, let's do one at a time. Okay. A, tangential speed, do you remember from chapter eight, is R omega, is that right? Mm -hmm. So just do that for all three. R is given, omega apparently was six for all of them, I think, is that true? So, this is multiply the radius times six, just for each one. Okay, that's part A. Everybody all right with that? Like, object number one was two times six, answers 12 meters per second. 
the next one's 1 1.5 times 6, and the next one's 3 times 6. Okay? Well, that's part A. All right, what's part B? Okay. Determine the total kinetic energy of the system using the expression kinetic energy equals 1 half mv squared plus 1 half mv squared. Okay, so there are two kinds of K. Uh, that's what we learned just yesterday, I guess. There are two kinds of kinetic energy. One is just the speed of the object moving. So this V is what you found up here. The V, the tangential speed is that V. This is that's what that is. And then that was the angular speed, omega, which I guess is six. All right, so um, what, I don't know what were we supposed to re read the question again. Well, for B, determine the total kinetic energy of the system using the expression uh, kinetic energy equals one half mv squared plus one half mv squared plus one half mv squared. Ah, so they're adding them all together. Okay, so. Um, for that one, I guess we don't need this because because the, what you just read was just this for each one, right? Okay, so sorry, don't need that. You need this one for number one, and then this again for number two, and this for number three, and add them together. That's all you do there. So it's one half six times six squared. Is this really true? No. Oh, no, not, not, sorry, that's omega. We don't need omega. It's, it's your answer up here. The V is your answer from part A. Okay, so for number one, it would be one half, the mass is six, and the V in, in for number one was 12 squared. Here, yeah, I'll write this down. One half, six times 12 squared was number one, and then one half M is for number two is four and its v was nine squared the, these v's you got from part a all right and then the third one is one half its m is three and its v from part a was 18. so just add that together and and that will be the the kinetic energy of the whole system okay using the expression that it told you to use. So, so that is kind of told you what to do in part B. Just plug in those numbers. You did, you did have to know that, that the V in that equation was the tangential velocity you found in part A. Okay, then question C, what is it? Obtain the moment of inertia of the system. The system again is all three of them. And so the, the moment of inertia for the whole system would be find I for each one and just add them together. That really is what you do. So uh, these are, what are these things? Are they solid disks? Um. Are they, what are they? What's the problem say they are in the very beginning of the problem? Just three objects. Does it say they're hollow inside, or does it give you any more information at all? They're just objects. Where is this number 51? <laughs> Rotate about the z axis with angular speed, the mass m. Oh no! <laughs> Lucy's hair. Wait, move for a second. Move for a second. That way. Move that way. Oh, I don't know. Keep going um, that way. Wait, let's see what I did on see. my paper. I oh, just did MR squared. Okay. Now she can. Is there some reason I knew that? I don't know. <laughs> anyway. So traumatized today. <laughs> MR squared plus MR squared plus MR squared. Okay. That it will give you the answer I have is correct for part C. And the M and R for each one are here. So plug all those in and they add up to 60. 60 kilogram meters squared. All right. Uh, I don't know how we knew it was no fraction in front of the MR squared. Maybe there was something in the problem that I didn't see when I just glanced at it. All right, so that's C. 
the whole system, the point there is if, if, if you can get I for one of these, well, then, but there are three objects in the system, just add them up. Okay, now part D. Find the rotational kinetic energy of the system using the relation kinetic energy rotational equals one half I omega squared. Okay. Uh, if it wants K rotational for the whole system, again, you've already added up all the I's to be 60, so you can just do it once and put 60 there because that's what we already found in part C. So it's going to be one half 60 times an omega was 6, remember? 6 squared. And that already, that already had, because all three of them had the same omega, now we've added up all the I's already, and so just plug, so now you can get the whole system's K rotational all at once. And that will come out to be 1,080. 1,080 uh, joules is kinetic energy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, like for the moment of inertia, Thing. If you have a disk with a hole in it, it's I equals to one squared, but it doesn't have a hole. If it's if it's hollow, all the, if all the mass is on the outside of the circle. So what if the mass like is it all on the outside? So like a then there'll be some fraction in front of the mr squared, and there's no way for you to know what it is. If if it's solid all the way through, the fraction is one half. Those are the two things that are kind of easy to remember. Does it matter? If, if all the mass is on the outside like a hula hoop, mm -hmm. that's mr squared. If it's solid all the way through, that's one half mr squared. Anything else would be some other fraction that you would you know unless you're told. How can you find that? <laughs> well, the idea is that if all the mass is out here, that's mr squared, well, the, the distance from the center to the center of mass mm -hmm. is r. Well, here, the the center of mass is about halfway between. If you think there's some mass e everywhere, so the center is in the middle, so that's one half of mass. But that's kind of the way. So it is it the mass. center of the mass of that object? It, yeah, but I mean the center of. Uh, like here, the center of mass is in the very center, but the mass is all on the outside. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, well, the distance from here to where all the mass is is right in the middle. From the center point to where all the mass is, that would be. That, that would be a line from the center to about right there. Okay. So anyway, that just gets you thinking what it means. That you still yeah, can't really use that to make the fraction. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what I want to do is go back to the problem we were doing when the bell rang yesterday, and the bell will ring on us again today. We can't win. <laughs> Never oh, I have a new marker. That's going to make it look good. You should have just slipped stock and quit talking. You just like, throw it away. Good marker. Back in my day, <laughs> we used chalk. Back in my day, we used chalk, and it didn't matter which side you were working on either of the chalk. But I had that teacher would make us go out and beat the erasers. Yeah, I the step. <laughs> Why did she do that? I used to beat among the students. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. What? what? Yeah, I didn't think you were No, <laughs> no. We, we didn't use whiteboards at Metro. We only had chalkboards. Yeah. All right, the question was <laughs> if you have a Diet Coke can full and you have another can that's hollow in the middle, if, if you, yeah, now look at this. If. If you just simply said all the u up here is equal to the k down there, which is what we were doing back last semester, they would both uh, they would both tie, wouldn't they? Because they both had the same mgh at the top, and and then therefore they have to have the same one half mb squared at the bottom. All of the u turned into k. And so they would get to the bottom at the same time. The, the, and even if the m's were, were different, the m's cancel out in the equation. So it didn't even matter if the masses were different. They should get to the bottom at the same time. But you saw yesterday they didn't, did they? The solid one got there first. So why is that? Well, that's because that's not all there is to it. It's also one half 
I omega squared. So they still started with the same amount of potential energy, both cans. But at the bottom, they don't have the same V because they don't have the same I. See, I is MR squared for the solid, but it's one half MR squared for the one that's hollow inside, or at least close to that. Wait, how was the other So if that's different, that's got to be different as well. Okay. So we were yesterday going through one of them and we started calculating what its what its speed would really be. And and I don't remember where we were, but we started with this one half. Were we doing the solid first? Mm -hmm. Okay, so one half m v squared plus one half i omega squared. And so um, we can say we can say i is for the solid, were we doing the solid first or the yes. hollow one first? Hot, solid. We were? Mm -hmm. You sure? Okay. Yeah, I wrote it down. All right, that's fine. So if it's solid, I is one half MR squared, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's I. Omega, if you remember, V is equal to R omega, right? Mm -hmm. VT, the tangential velocity is R omega. So omega is equal to V over R, isn't it? So instead of omega, I can put V over R squared, which would be V squared over R squared. Okay, I'm just putting that there. The reason I'm putting that there is because that V there is the same as this V here. And so that's what we want to solve it for, V. But when I write it that way, what cancels out? All right, look at this whole thing. What cancels out? R, no. There's an R squared that's up. There's an R squared that's down. The R squareds go away. What else cancels out? The mass. If you divide both sides by M, both expressions have an M. The mass says all cancel out as well. The M's and the R all went away. So what's left? GH is equal to one half V squared plus one four, here let's write it down, one half v squared plus one half times one half is one fourth v squared. What's one half plus one fourth? A number. Three it's three fourths. So what I have on is gh on the left and on the right I've got three fourths v squared. Then we said that h was point one. Yes, we gave a number to the h, you're right. So on the left, I've got 9.8 times 0.1, and that's equal to 3 fourths v squared. I can get v from that, can't I? Mm -hmm. What does v come out to be? I don't know. That's Somebody really calculate that real fast. Uh, 9.8 times 0.1 times 4 divided by 3. Who's got a calculator who can do that real fast? Come on, before you leave, let's at least put a number here. <laughs> Somebody tell me, Someone multiply split. this, times four, divided by three. Where's Jack when you need him? Yeah, <laughs> yeah he loves counting. Was it? Bud. Sarah's close. <laughs> He's the only one. No, Steve's trying. What'd you get? Wow, Steve. One point. <laughs> one four? Did you get one point one four? Yeah, one point one four. <laughs> Now tomorrow we will we will go with the hollow one and calculate its V and, and compare. We think it should be less because the, the solid one is the one that's one. You know what? All right. You know what your homework is? Okay. Ba -da -ba -da. Your homework is K and yeah, is. M. Yeah. K and M. 